In this video, we'll be having a look at some of the more obscure features in Inkscape that aren't always visible in plain sight. And the first of which would be the default fill and stroke for new objects that you create. So to demonstrate this example, I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool and I'm gonna create a rectangle and I'm going to apply a fill color of blue and I'm gonna hold shift and click on the color green so I apply a green stroke. Now you may have noticed that in Inkscape, whenever you apply fill and stroke settings like I just did right there, every new object that you create going forward will have those same properties. If you don't like that behavior and you wanna change it so that there's a default fill and stroke for every new shape that you create, all you have to do is double click the tool and a preferences menu will open where you can choose to use the tool's last use style or you can set your own style. So let me close out of this and set my own style. I'm gonna set my color, my default fill color to black, and then I'm gonna hold shift and get rid of the stroke by clicking on the red X right there. And now we have a fill color of black with no stroke. Now let's say that's what I want my default to be every time I create new objects. All I have to do is double click the tool, choose this option right here that says this tool's own style, and then click this button right here that says take from selection. And now every new shape that you create going forward, despite whatever fill and stroke you apply, will be in your chosen fill and stroke. Now I should add that this has to be applied for each of these shapes. So as of right now, this only functions like that for the rectangle tool. If I want the ellipse tool to function like that, I have to double click on it and apply the same thing. But thankfully there's not too many tools here. There's the rectangle, the circle, the stars and polygons, just a few tools to go through and you could change those settings. And now when you create new shapes, you'll have that default fill and stroke every time. Another thing that Inkscape lets you do that you may not have known about is add hyperlinks to objects on your canvas so that if you save your work as a PDF document, you will have clickable links in your document. So to do this, all you have to do is select the object that you'd like to apply a link to, or in my case here, it would be a grouping of objects, and then right click it and go over to where it says create anchor hyperlink. When you do that, you're gonna get the object attributes menu over here and up here where it says href, you can just paste in your URL like that. And now if you save your document as a PDF file, you can open it with a PDF viewer and you should have a clickable link on that object. Another handy feature in Inkscape is having the ability to work in isolation mode with grouped objects. So my artwork on my canvas here is separated into groupings of objects to keep everything organized. And normally if I wanted to edit some of the objects within this grouping, I would have to ungroup it and then make my transformation. And then when I'm done, group everything back together again. There is a better way though. If you select the grouping of objects, you can right click it and go down to where it says enter group. And now you can edit the individual elements within that group. And once you're finished, all you have to do is right click again and go to exit group. And there you go, now your group is still preserved without having to ungroup anything. If you're using version 1.3 of Inkscape or later, then you should have the ability to pin and unpin colors to your color palette. To show you what I mean, if you look down here to the bottom left of your screen, you'll see that the swatches for black, gray, and white are larger than the other swatches. That's because these colors are pinned to the color palette here. Now, if you wanna remove one of these colors, all you have to do is right click it and go to unpin color, and now that's gone. All you're left with is black and white here. So let's say you're, you're designing a logo, for example, and you have some colors that you wanna work with frequently and you wanna keep them pinned to your color palette so that you don't have to keep using the dropper tool to access them again. All you have to do is right click the swatch and go to pin color and now that color is pinned to your color swatch. And I'll do the same thing over here. I'll select this object and I'll right click the color I wanna save and go to pin color. And now I have the colors that I'm using for this logo design pinned to my palette for easy access. Another thing that you can do in Inkscape is save your brush settings so that you can work with them later on if you want to. So for example here, I have my calligraphy brush chosen and let's say I have all of my settings here that I really like and these settings are my preference for working with calligraphy. What I can do is instead of having to manually input these settings every time I open Inkscape, I can click this button over here that says add or edit profile. And now I can add a name for this profile here. So I'll just name this example and I will click save. And now whenever you go to use the calligraphy brush, you will have that example there saved for you to use. Now I should mention that in order for this to work, you're gonna have to restart Inkscape. So don't be worried if you don't see it in your list here just yet. 
The final hidden feature we'll be looking at in this video are the hidden path effects. So if I select an object that's a path and I come over here to my path effects menu, I can click this drop down button right here to choose one of these path effects. What you may not know though is that there are additional path effects in Inkscape that aren't indexed here because these are experimental path effects. Or in other words, they are under construction and not ready for deployment just yet. But if you'd like to play around with them, you can make them visible by going to the Preferences menu. So I'm going to press Control shift p on the keyboard to get the Preferences menu. If you're using Mac, it would be Command-Shift-P. And then I'll come up here to the search bar and I will type in Path Effects. Now over here, you'll see these two options right here. Show Experimental Path Effects. Let's tick that box to make that visible. And we also have to show the deprecated LPE gallery as well. So let's tick that box as well. And now if we close out of the Preferences menu, you will see instead of using this dropdown right here, we have this legacy icon right here that opens up the old Path Effects menu. And if I click on that, you can see all of the path effects here. And you'll also see this button right here that says Show Experimental. If I click on that button, now we have the experimental path effects indexed here as well. And you'll know which ones they are because their icon is depicted by this little bomb icon. So I don't know what these path effects are. I haven't used them yet personally, but if you want to play around with them and find anything cool or maybe something you'd like me to explore for a future tutorial, go right ahead and leave a comment below. So that should do it for today's video. Those are six hidden features in Inkscape that you may not have known about. Leave a comment below to let me know what you think. And as always, thanks for watching. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Inkscape, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.